Middlesex's Clydesdale Bank 40 season got underway in a disappointing fashion as they lost by five wickets to Gloucestershire in a rain-affected match which was reduced to 26 overs beside at Lords. After Alex Gidman won the toss, he asked Middlesex to bat first and they made a good enough start through the informed Joe Denley and David Milan. Bearing in mind that this game had been reduced to not much more than a 2020 contest, this wasn't a damaging start from this pair, but their steady approach did at least stay a decent platform for their side, who were looking for a winning start against a team which had started their campaign the previous day with a defeat to Holland. New boy Denley is a very handy one-day player, but he was first out at the end of the eighth over when he missed a drive off Gloucestershire debutant Graham McCarter and was bowled for 25 at 45 for one. Middlesex were then put back somewhat as they also lost Milan for 22 as he holed out off Ed Young. And Chris Rogers, who'd made only two when he nicked a Jonathan Batty behind off Benny Howell. That left the home side on 58 for three midway through the 12th over, but they still had plenty of batting left to get themselves a challenging total. Paul Sterling and Neil Dexter, back skippering the side in the shorter version of the game, added 26 in the next 21 deliveries. But both were out in quick succession as Gloucestershire applied the brakes once more. Dexter on nine couldn't get enough on a shot of a rather disinterested young to be held in the deep by Ian Cobain. And Sterling nicked the spinner behind to depart for an encouraging 25 made off 21 balls. With nine overs to go, Middlesex had now reached 91 for five and they needed some big hitting from their lower middle order, the likes of Gareth Berg. He and John Simpson did carry the score to 137 with only 13 balls of the innings left, but Simpson then holed out off McCarter to Hamish Marshall to go for a sprightly 29. Berg followed in the next over, edging Ian Saxelby behind on 23, leaving it to Ollie Rayner to try and get as many runs as he could off the final over of the innings. Middlesex did lose Stephen Crook to the penultimate ball, but finished on 157 for eight, a decent enough total made better when Chris Dent was bang in front to Tim Murta in the first over of Gloucestershire's reply. The partnership which put Gloucestershire well on top came next between Marshall and Howell. Corey Collimore's opening two overs were expensive. They went for 22 runs and that importantly put Gloucestershire ahead of the required run rate early on and that made life so much easier for the rest of their batsmen as the game moved on. It was, to be fair, an impressive performance from the West Countrymen as this pair scored at 10 runs per over. Not that these two had put the game out of sight and when Rayner had Marshall leg before as he missed out on another big shot, Gloucestershire was 61 for two in the seventh over. But such a speedy start had put the visitors well ahead and they kept going with Howell looking especially good. This shot off Dexter was the only six of the game. Cook came on and immediately had the dangerous Kane Williamson leg before for nine at 89 for three at the start of the 11th over. But just 69 were needed for the final 16 overs and that meant that Alex Gidman could bat without any panic to ease his side close to the finishing line. He played some decent shots and found the gaps well. Middlesex were given just a little hope when Rayner bowled Gidman for 26 and 122 for four at the end of the 15th over. But Cobain had time to settle in to push his team near to their target without too much fuss. He fell to Dexter LBW with only eight needed off 37 balls. And that left Howell to strike the winning runs with 22 balls remaining. He finished unbeaten on 45. That gave Gloucestershire a comfortable win by five wickets, not the ideal start for Middlesex, although there is, of course, a long, long way to go in this competition. Middlesex now head to Nottingham for an important championship match against a side one place above them in the table.